got fire in there. I was clean the filters. Good to have a fire extinguisher. Drying. I'm going to check the vent. Make sure you got vents. There's a vent at. This vent here. Probably 70% of the dryer repairs I go to are related to flow. Gotta have inlet and outlet all the way through. And this one seems good. Just want to make sure you got good flow. Flow is the name of the game. Shane. Okay. Okay. That should be good. <laughs> oh, we'll keep this door closed. So, here the motor. The motor sounds like it's laboring a little bit. It's still drying. We're gonna just let it run for a little while. Because we got tenants clothes in there, we're gonna dry these clothes out. See, that was actually there was some gunk on the bottom. And this has actually gone out now, so there's no flame. So what normally happens is this will come on like the first, maybe the first shot, it will come on for a little while and then shut off. And so usually when that happens, it's a valve coil. It's a two-terminal valve, valve coil that goes out. And um, what it will normally do, it will come on fine, first shot, then the next one, when it cycles back out on, it won't. It's related to heat stress, whatever. As soon as it heats up, then the, the valve coil will fail. And so, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's typically what will happen. Um, and here, these clothes are actually almost dry. But, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do is we're going to have to take this off. And the bolt in here, if there's a bolt in there, there's a half inch bolt down in there we have to take off. Take this top off and then we can pull the front panel and then look at the valve coils. Okay, so this one here, we see we got a lot of lint built up. This seal is actually a little bit loose on the front here. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Here's your disclaimer, guys. Don't try this at home. Electrical shock hazard. Consult your local professional. And if we look in here, we see this is almost 100% plugged up, okay? There's a bunch of crap in there. This thing here looks pretty good. Uh, got a lot of lint built up. And typically, we have this problem here. This valve, this valve coil is normally shot. It's this two-terminal valve coil right there. That's the one that normally gives us a problem. And so... I'm going to check that with a meter, and I'm sure I'm going to find it bad. And I'm going to clean out all this crap in here. I'm going to get all this crap off the motor if we can. Motors like to run cool, and when they have all this crap on them, they don't run cool, they'll overheat. This one feels good. The shaft feels halfway decent. It's not sloppy back and forth. Got good idler. Good roller. I always lube these up a little bit just with like a drop of my favorite oil. And Triflow guys, if you want to sponsor me, I'll do more info on what I use Triflow for. It's very good lubricant. Um, actually, it's the best. And, uh, you know, doing handyman work, um, I use it quite a bit. And it's, it's one of the most effective lubricants I have found over the last 20 years or so. And so TriFlow, if you can help me out, I'll do some more stuff for you. Okay, so uh, anyway, back to this one. I always put a couple of drops of TriFlow on the rollers and the idler. Sometimes I'll actually lube the bearings in here. I've resurrected these motors with the TriFlow. Um, and I've got several videos on that as well. Anyway, back to the job at hand. I, need, I definitely need to clean this out. And then I'll check this with a meter and see what we got probably have to replace that 
Okay, so this is the trick with the, the felt, the front felt. You can see there's like a little gap here. And actually what I did is I stuffed a piece of wire and put some uh, glue in here to keep this thing, this felt forward. Because if you don't keep it forward, it goes back and it doesn't... Uh, this is what that felt rides on. So that thing, it'll get halfway. You can see it's almost kind of worn. See how it's worn? It's got this unworn part right here. That part's worn. So what happens is when that seal, that felt, is not sticking out, then it, it will only ride on half of this. And so we pull this felt out a little bit so it gets a better grab on the top edge. And so this one here, you know, the thing is, is I've tried it like, this is the fifth time I've tried it, and it fires right up. And I'm going to probably just put it back together. Probably just put it back together, watch it, fire it up a couple more times, make sure it fires up, and uh, then I'll leave it alone. See, that's like the fourth time in a row it fired. Plenty of fire in there. So it's possible that uh, one of these coils is starting to go out, but it's not wanting to go out right now. Uh, so it's typically going to be that coil there that goes out. Um, so yeah, this one mystery uh, anyway we're gonna, we clean that out we're going to shorten that give it more of a straight shot than wind it around the corner five times and then uh, and then go from there uh oh sprung a leak uh -uh. So yeah we got sharp edges on this stuff look in here Got, it's actually there it is it's lighting up again um, so now it's not lighting so that I gotta take it apart check that check that coil one more time after Okay, so yeah, basically uh, it's that coil I was talking about before, that two uh, terminal coil. And that two terminal coil, this is, uh, oh, it was almost six times. Six times I tried that and then finally it failed. I put the meter on it and then it's open. So it's that coil right there. If you ever have any problem like that, it's, it's probably wise just to go ahead and replace that coil. And... Uh, so I'm bleeding. I, I got cut. These edges right here are pretty sharp. Um, these edges here and here are really sharp notoriously. Um, and I think that's where it got me. These edges weren't made for the whatever the consumer to handle. And uh, it's not too bad, but it's continuing to bleed. Uh, so there's a little disclaimer for you. Um, so yeah, I just need to swap those coils, this coil here, and we should be good. And if you need any help, I give phone consultations for $39, 707-443-8347. I also teach a repair course, how to make money in the appliance repair business. Uh, I take two students per year, and if you're interested, get a hold of me. And otherwise, rate, comment, and subscribe. And thanks for watching, guys.